Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach, and today we're going to be talking about something that is actually very dear to me because this is this whole idea of what health is and how we define it. And when I was going through my health journey, I defined it as getting a six pack was my idea of health. And today we're going to be demystifying the six pack. And I have with me Neha Sahai, and we're going to deep dive into what is the six pack. Should we be actually getting it? What are the benefits, pros, and cons? So Neha, welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. Thank you for having me here. Well, I went through the journey of getting a six pack as well, being a girl. That also post having a child, post C sec. It was definitely a high. I'm not going to deny it. When I got it, I achieved it. But the journey, which nobody talks about to get it, you know, we are so obsessed with Instagram and social media giving you compliments. You know, and to continue getting those likes and compliments, we keep doing certain things with our body so that we can still continue looking that way. You know, I mean, I came here today and I got a little conscious how I was sitting, and then I just realized why am I doing this again in my life? You know. So a six pack journey though is a mo- one of the most difficult journeys to reach honestly speaking because I think indian body is not genetically you know designed that way we tend to have more visceral fat around our stomach by nature our fat percentage is slightly higher than the muscle mass compared to people in europe and america so we usually compare ourselves that's why when you drink a glass of beer and someone next to you who's an american or a british drinking a glass of beer their stomach will not come out and yours will with that one glass and you wonder what happened So this journey started after I delivered my child I looked at myself in the mirror and I was really upset now obviously every woman goes through it and most women are okay with it but I was one of those women who didn't want to look like that and it was not only about the physical appearance that I wanted to improve it's just the whole mental state was not at the best position I think I had post pregnancy depression I don't know what I was going through that point in my life so I decided let's channel my energy. just like a cocktail of emotions at that time right Yeah there was too much and you know honestly how much ever men say they understand it nobody does <laughs> impossible and I, i don't blame them because they have not gone through that journey right and a woman is just expected by the entire world to take care of her child breastfeed your child give up all your ambitions i mean just just take care of the child and you're done with it that's your job after a child so i decided that i'm going to change it i'm going to change the narrative after 6 months of feeding her going through the entire journey i was like this is it i can't look like this anymore you know and let's face it all men like fitter chicks and I somehow felt that that would also get my husband's attention more maybe. I don't know what I was thinking as I said. So I started this journey and I didn't go through it in a bad way. I did follow a proper diet obviously because that's what I'm best at doing. Correct. Making a diet. I follow a proper protein carb ratio, the fat ratio. I obviously lifted a lot of weights. I think there was a point where I was 53 kilos and I was lifting 75 kg of deadlift. Wow. Yeah, that was insane. I used to like lift as much as any guy in the gym. I can't tell you that high when you lift weights and you can lift more and more each time. So obviously I did invest in a professional trainer for that who actually trained me very well. I was very lucky to have a guy like that who could train me so well. So I was obsessed with this whole journey. I used to wake up, the aim was what to eat first thing in the morning and that was obviously a calculative a lot of eggs, let's put it that way. And, and this becomes the first thought in the morning, right? It's just like, oh, I have to do this now. No, no, you have to do it, right? How else will you get it? Because I'm not genetically blessed. I was one of the fattest kids back in my school days. I was actually known as the fat kid, you know. So the thing is, to change that body is a lot of hard work, even even more for me, you Correct. know. So you know, nobody encourages you. What to do? Is it marriage? Is it child? Is it child? Is it child? Now, what do you want to do more? Why you want this? Yeah, what is it? Who is to impress? So Correct. Correct. So I said, screw everyone. I want to impress myself only now, you know. So I. I mean insane I'm telling you to such an extent I remember I was called for a food tasting with my husband and I don't know I was eating the decoration that was next to it <laughs> like the flower you know that they do I don't even know how old it is because you must be transforming from one plate to the other <laughs> and I was sitting and eating that and my husband was like wow wow kya khana hai kya khana hai and I was just sitting there and I started to realize as the months went by I obviously got the six pack and I did a photo shoot and my entire career boomed after that because so many women approached me and i thought that was the right thing to get every woman that you know encourage this whole concept to put up my pictures you know wearing really small shorts sports bras and you know just give it all out there you know girls you can get this going but then there came a phase after a year you know i was like i didn't get periods you know i was just getting spotting and i was like yeah whatever you know it's happening and and i let that go for a couple of months i obviously know what i was suffering but I, i was living in denial i needed to gain fat i was too low in my fat percentage and because of that my hormones were getting affected it was not only that i got my male hormone test done dht which was up the roof it wow. was more than 300 400 and to some extent i think that helped me to get the six pack also and so women who do have pcos at some level because your male hormone is on a higher side it does benefit the muscle mass you know mm. to some extent to get it mm. 
and i'm not talking about a bulky body but a lean body that happened it was up the roof because obviously i had too much whey protein as well to get the body now again for the world it was wow look at her in her dress look at neha sahai she looking the best in her life you know so again to keep that high going i continued to do what i was doing i started sleeping really less i used to hardly sleep obviously i was cranky i was very irritable because the carbs were really low in my diet and constipated most of the times because of a high protein diet nobody you know tells you the side effects of getting a six pack you know there came a point in my life i decided i'm going to gain some weight okay now it's high time i do this i remember i had a photo shoot and 3 days before my shoot i was told not to have salt and whatever you know th- those are the ways it's done and honestly the minute the shoot got over i took 3 aloo ka parathas i ate them and ate a chocolate bar and that's the time i realized this is it i'm done you know i don't need to prove anyone anything anymore i think i need to prove myself again that i've gone mad and i have to get back to normalcy when the body also i let go of it you know, i can't tell you the phase of i was getting upset because people don't spare you they to comment ah you know more that toned you know and it started affecting me and i was like why am i letting so many people around me to affect my entire mental well being and my physical well being who are they to decide this is the perfect body correct and then my whole narrative in my head and in life changed again i gained 4 kilos which is very hard most women will agree that to let go of the six pack gain the 4 kilos don't fit into an extra small and fit into a small and go through that whole disturbed phase where you still ask people at am i looking thin but extra small small you're still thin okay mm. you're not into an extra large right correct then my mental being obviously became way better i don't look at food now as macros i look at food as food you know it's there you need to eat it okay going out obviously be mindful there are certain things that obviously being a nutritionist i can't sit any unlimited fried food or something like that that happens very rare in my body or i'll have too many cocktails it just doesn't come natural to me but this whole obsession of not eating most of the times so or eating just very high protein diet is stopped totally obviously i don't have a six pack i may not have such a flat stomach anymore but i'm so much more happier i enjoy my life more i think my relationship with people around me are much better and i think i can work better now you know earlier to be very cranky I, my poor assistant i don't know what all she went through when i was in that <laughs> phase but i think she stuck around with me so now she's quite happy i think at some level is not worth it i think someone wants to do it do it but be prepared that it will go away at some point what you see in actors and what you see on instagram is not real life and you know i started to see these ads a bikini body a lenga body i was like what, what is hell? a lenga body i just saw someone saying that you know get your own lenga body and there's a girl with a flat stomach and i said indian body for lenga was never supposed to be a flat stomach it should be voluptuous and you know having a little fat correct but that's the way people are promoting even like summer body so i actually wrote on my instagram saying that what is a winter body like mm. you know what is what is this summer body concept this bikini body like who has defined these body types you know and like a victoria model i think is more of got to do with men who have decided how women should look and women have just taken that as an obsession phase so and unfortunately a lot of trainers and a lot of nutritionists put a picture of a girl with a flat stomach and then i met those girls after a year because you know how bombay is a very small city and you meet people and they don't have it anymore hmm. but they never showed that part of their journey correct you know just the flat stomach flat stomach flat stomach so it's obviously trying to now give out that message saying that yes if you want it i don't deny it get it be prepared what your journey will take you to and no matter what you say these are the phases you're going to go through with it and honestly speaking if i feel if you're not in this modeling career and actors where you actually do need that body I don't think you should do that much of hard work just try to be healthy eat clean eat right and let the body be you know you need to be happy in your skin so if you can find that it's very good no matter what whatever size you are never going to be happy right you're never going to be happy with it and also especially when you're putting your body through so much you're mentally not in a state to be happy how can you be like i keep that joking with people and i'm like i'm not worrying about my six pack anymore because people stopped inviting me home for dinner Like Ashton doesn't eat anything. He won't eat this. Exactly like you said, he's going to eat the garnish. <laughs> I I don't know how people go out on a date. I know people who do intermittent fasting and are on keto. Mm. I I don't get it. Then when do you eat and what do you eat and how do you go out? I mean, it's just beyond me. Sixteen, seventeen hours of inter, and then we do keto. So I'm like, what life are you guys living? Unless you have a health issue, you know. I get it. You have to take these measures, but for vanity, there's a level you need to stop. I yesterday spoke to a fifteen years old kid and. I was quite upset actually talking to her because a lot of kids come to me and and you know most of them want a skinny body. Mm-hmm. 
so i told her there is a kaili also and there is a kendal also please mm. you can be the other side but she like every year my class is skinny mm. so i said so what you know i will make you thin that's not the problem but you will never be happy if you don't change your mindset because you're a beautiful looking girl you're growing you've hit your puberty there's nothing to be she was upset because she had big breasts and i'm like and with time you'll realize that's mm. not a downfall you know you don't have to be that skinny girl you know but then that's the way it is i remember back in the days i had my lips were thicker than usual and all the kids used to draw it and i used to be like mom what's wrong with my lips obviously that back in the, those parents were like kuch bhi bol rahi hai hmm. but today it's actually a good thing to have it you know people are actually putting injections to get it correct so it's just it's an unfortunate thing that we are idolizing and thinking of a particular body image which we shouldn't be honestly correct in fact like uh, our human body was not designed for a six pack right never, like, never it was not a survival mechanism in any case because you needed the fat the fat was good for you we need that little layer and the point is that unless you learn about this or, or like you know hear from somebody else's experience you're always going to be like i want that i want that i want that but it's not it's not good you know but the problem is it's it's the social media you know we're too absorbed by it we assume this is what everyone's life is i mean there are people who come and tell me you're so lucky i said no i work my ass out to be what i am i work i take care of my child i then exercise in the end of the day correct to even remain a particular size you know so but people think it's easy to get it unfortunately the concept is sold easier also to people through social media or when you approach especially trainers because obviously this is their business but the thing is they don't actually tell you the down i know so many girls who are pcos and they are not supposed to have whey protein mm. but trainers give it to them now the difference is they are with a trainer thrice you know we get like your second husband now all of a sudden you know because you're always with him and you're probably talking to him more because in that one hour correct so they keep advising and they don't have the knowledge so it's not even technically their fault but it's i think as a person you need to be aware that this is not an easy process and if anyone is selling you that idea they're actually lying to you and if someone comes to you with this goal i want to see visible abs etc yeah. what is the conversation that you typically have with them so i always tell them yes you can get them because obviously you can with hard work but i also tell them that it'll go if you're with me on a particular diet plan for 3 to 4 months depending on your size some may take a year also some may take 2 years but if you're already a thin girl who wants to get that extra toneness it'll come in 3 months or 4 months of hard work and weight training along with a very healthy protein rich diet but it will go also the minute you stop this diet so it's a process you have to keep doing as a matter of fact actors when you see also on social media they have those phases where they actually have the six pack and then they don't have it so they don't get clicked in that particular phase when they don't have it but we assume they have it fully around which is not the case correct few people on social media also when they have it you know there's so many things you can enhance your abs with with makeup with lighting which people don't realize and we all know today that all this plays such an important part to put up a reel on social media today you were saying that all the stuff that you have to do before your photo shoot you know oh. like low sodium what what are the other things that they so basically you're told not to drink water huh. 24 hours before like really reduce the intake of water salt obviously now this is your madness to do it hmm. i was not becoming an actor so i don't know why i was doing it also firstly that is a thing then you know some you actually take a vodka shot you actually dehydrate your muscles further in the night if Woo-hoo. you do that and sleep huh. So you so wake up with really bad. <laughs> you really wake up with bad breath. Really tired. Really hoping the shoot ends fast, and all you can do is dream about food. But then I'm telling you, you know, the problem is it has a certain high attached to all this, yes. which is very hard to explain. You know, it gets you really excited also. You know, in the end of the day. But after all this, Mehna told so that woman who does her makeup will do on your abs also. She like no, it won't come in the photo. Hmm. But I'm like I worked so hard. Hmm. So is it? I wouldn't have done only all this. A little bit more makeup, she would have done. It would have come naturally. Correct contour. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, to be done. Then what is the benefit? You know, but it is what it is. We live in a world where, you know, we are deceived how we are supposed to actually look, and it is the world we are living in today. Correct. But I personally advise everyone the reality, and especially women, because mm-hmm. women will get affected with their hormones. Yeah. So that even good. guys, sex drive drops dramatically. Yeah, but the thing is, with women, it's it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. With this PCOS increase and with thyroid and other hormonal issues, it's just too much happening with their body when they go through this phase. But then again, I think if you want to get it once, do it for fun. But then just be prepared to let go of mm-hmm. it because I had a good time till the time I had it. Yeah, right. I also got upset when it went 
also doing through the phase to get it was a bit challenging but it had a certain high you enjoy the challenge but yeah. it's not a way of life that's it's the point the yeah, right the like if you think that you're going to have a six pack for the rest of your life eh, no unfortunately i don't know what the deal is you know i'm telling you i was on a holiday with my greek friend in greece and i'm telling you both of us were in bikinis and for six days she looked exactly the same in that bikini and how was like dude what's happening with me have i got pregnant or what is it why is my stomach com- coming out every single day more and more and she's like i don't get it what's the deal with you we both are doing exactly the same thing and i'm like i don't know i really don't understand indian body sometimes but i guess as i said we are more prone to fat percentage over our muscle mass now we supposed to have the curves in any case no sari like you said the lenga body is supposed yeah, to be yeah i don't right. understand that concept i was shocked when i read it i'm telling you i was in the plane i saw that ad bikini body summer body lenga body and i was like Telling you, then why don't men have a swim trunk body? Why is that word not used? No, we have dad bods, na. No? I don't know what bods are there. <laughs> men can get away with all of this, you know. Somehow, if they are rich, so you can get away with being as fat as you want. So this is the point of writing the advertisement, na. No? You can choose what to put it there. And I was so upset. I remember writing in the plane the entire post, you know, and I didn't give it to my social media person that this is going to come. And she like, why did you do it? Hmm. And I was like, I had to do it. And I remember putting a photo of mine in a bikini. I even wrote. That how many angles I had to do to get this photo perfect, and my sister was clicking, and then in the end she threw the phone on me, and she like, please, I'm not doing this more. Hmm. So I was just like, even for someone like me who's gotten over this whole phase, is confident today in her skin, still goes through these angles and these phases. You know? Yeah, I think this whole aspect of being comfortable with your body, accepting it, all of that is so difficult to do in today's scenario, right? Honestly speaking, I think at some level, be it a man or be it a woman, as I said, even a child today. has gotten a little too conscious very even children like you said absolutely right yeah that's what i'm saying i'm not even saying just adults today mm-hmm. and i'm telling you because i get approached by so many kids and sometimes to deal with them their appointments are the longest because i really want to mentally figure out what's wrong with them mm-hmm. more than the food you know as i said we're living in this world where how we look or how we perceive ourselves on social media is what the world believes you are mm-hmm. nobody sees the behind journey nobody sees your mental issues and nobody talks to there are a lot of pages now which are coming with body positivity and they say but unfortunately the body positivity phase of a girl who's 150 kilos that's that's you're going to fall sick eventually yeah so that's not what you're supposed to show and dance on it and wear some skimpy clothes and say it's okay to wear it hmm. yeah it is okay to wear it but you're not healthy so again the whole track is it's like two worlds one you're skinny and fit one you're really fat and it's okay to be both you know yeah, and health lies somewhere in between these two unfortunately i'm telling you i've had people and i said this in your previous podcast also that i had a woman with one kidney i come with women whose gut is messed up i come with men who have uh who can get a heart attack any day but the first thing is make us lose weight yeah. mm. we want to look good i said first improve the gut nahi 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 just 2 3 kilos to do only so i said but that that's what i'm saying our goal is our goals have changed to becoming healthy we just want to look fit without even trying the healthy part correct So I think people don't know what the definition of healthy is, no, no. Like, what is healthy? I can see my fat. I can step on a weighing scale, so I know these are measurable. But how do I measure my health? You know what I feel like. I think firstly, if you can wake up fresh, mm. you can go through the day without feeling sleepy. Mm. You have a lot of energy. You can handle multiple issues at one go, and you can sleep through the night. You are healthy, and that no size can say that. That you can say that to yourself. So I think if you can. do all these five six things and feel it then you're fine and i love how this conversation has taken us full circle because that's exactly what we said you did yeah. not feel when you were on this six pack journey right I didn't all feel these any things of were this. out none of the of window this. none of this no, just fit into really good clothes hmm. and just felt good myself only that's it we're going to take a quick break see you on the other side Welcome back. All right, let's jump into the conversation. Last question on this part. Okay, take someone through how hard the journey is to get to that six pack. So, what are the things that you had to do, and what is the difficulties that people would have to go through if they want to be on this journey? So, number one is you need to really follow your diet very strictly, and it is a little easier. I feel if you're a non-vegetarian, to be honest, because you can definitely add in the eggs and the meat, which will give you enough boost of protein. in comparison to a vegetarian who may require more supplements and that is the reality it will not happen by eating unlimited dairy and tofu and especially if you are suffering from certain health issues probably both those things will be minor absolutely so obviously i do feel there is an upper hand for non vegetarian to eat real food hmm. over the supplement over a vegetarian 
But what does a food look like? People normally think that you have to eat like a sparrow or you have to. What no, does it it's look not like? about. It is your macros hmm. do matter in it. So your protein will be obviously the maximum, hmm. followed by fat and then carbs being the lowest. Okay, so these are three aspects you need to calculate really well, and your body will take few days to adjust to the different change in the macros, and you have to keep manipulating it. So certain days you will be eating more. Carbs, and I'm talking about a lean body because you know each body has different. If you want to bulk up, it's a totally different diet. You know, you have to probably eat way more calories if you're a skinny guy who wants to bulk up. You know, so it just depends from body to body type. There's no benchmark regarding this. But obviously, as I said, protein has to be high. Okay. Second thing is obviously training, hmm. which plays the very important role because when you break down muscle only, so it will happen, hmm. right? It's not about two three hours of doing it, but that particular. But it's a good at least one and a half hour to. How much were you spending time in the gym at that so point? So one hour twenty minutes was the gym, which was weight lifting, and in the evening one hour would be a walk run, walk run. But I'll tell you, body was very sore. Body was tight, very tight. I developed a degenerative disc, which is basically one of your disc in your back gets pressed, and it's a lifelong problem which I have to deal with today. So you have to be prepared for the injury aspect. Now, if you're a younger person in your twenties doing it, it will probably recover faster. Hmm. If you're thirty-five to forty plus and get into this journey, the recovery rate may be slower, and then what you do with that recovery, how you take care of it, also matters with you and everything. That is another phase you have to go through. Second is so we finish the diet, the physical, then the mental phase. You have to have no motivation is not the criteria, just discipline, hmm. and you need a lot of discipline from the time you wake up till your. But day say ends. that again. Motivation is not the factor. Not at all, because how motivation only will drive you for one day. You will need. You can look at someone's picture and say, "I want this," and that's over. Motivation is done. Correct. But discipline is from morning to evening till you sleep, which you won't get enough sleep eventually. But that's what you need to do. And as I said, depending on your body goals, some people may require a lot of supplements. And this can go like you want to bulk up with muscle. You may need creatine. You know, these are things you may need. People are taking fat burners, and now you're getting it so easily. The OTC products and any chemist. So people even do go ahead and take that. And maybe some people do require. Again, it just depends how desperate you are. The more problem with today is your instant gratification, right? You want it. I want it. You don't want to go through that one year journey, three, four months. So people are just pumping in with things in their body to get it. Obviously, your nutritionist and your trainer has to be really good. And most don't work together with each other because the nutritionist hates the trainer. The trainer hates the nutritionist. They both have difference of opinion. Hmm. So that's another phase that you have to go through because you, as a person, you need to figure who's giving you better advice. Basically, the diet, physical and mental aspect, all three, and you have to be prepared. all of them have to be on point, like you said, disciplined through the day. Discipline, consistency, mm. and lot of patience. Twenty four seven. Lot of patience, mm. and you will achieve it. There is no doubt about it. And then you will let go of it much faster than the amount. So you can take one year to get it, and you can go in fifteen days away. I was just gonna say that. Patak karke it go. Patak, you have one bottle of vodka and it's gone. <laughs> you have a couple of burgers, it's gone. Yeah. Why it's are you gone. having a bottle of vodka? Bottle of vodka. I don't have it, but yeah. But I'm saying because our generation can't do without alcohol. Also, I feel lately, everyone comes to me for a diet. The more than anything else, how much alcohol will you give us? Hmm. I said, "Abhi to shuru kiya diet to shuru karo alcohol. Why are you thinking so much?" So we did a whole Instagram live on how tequila is damn good for you. So, yeah. like, so now please only give tequila to people. Yeah, you feel that? <laughs> I think it's the quantity that will matter more than anything else. Lovely, Neha. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. How can people get in touch with you? How can people continue this conversation? So the best way to do is through my Instagram at the rate Neha Sahai. Neha Sahai, that's the best place to connect yes, with you. Yes, everything is Neha Sahai, so it's not that difficult to find me. Fantastic, and she's super, super active on Instagram. So please do reach out to her. Thank you so much, Neha. Thank you for having me. Now, if you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM Network. You can listen to us on the IBM Podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media. We are at IBM Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am at Ashton Doc on Twitter and Instagram. We have a brand new habit coaching online course, quizzes, videos, and a lot more on the website awesome180.com. So check it out now.